everybody knows that uh, now it is time for civil space development and space business era after passing time of government-led space development. Now you have two very distinguished guests, Kamal Gafarian yeah, from the Axiom Space, astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria, the chief astronaut of Axiom Space. The first question, the Axiom Space is uh, said to be uh, developing a commercial space station here, uh, private space travel has newly emerging as the space business areas. How much can the private space travel market develop in a big market in the future? You know, we, we actually much more than uh, taking a private astronaut to space. Um, we're, our long-term vision is to build a city in space. I mean, you know, a city where people can go to work, um, they can live there. I mean, just literally like a small town with all kinds of activities, uh, school, restaurants, uh, laboratories, and maybe even have a, a place where uh, there is gravity. So, uh, you know, you, you live just like you live on planet Earth. And, and the inner layer will have the uh, ability to have zero gravity, uh, where you can perform all, call, all, all kind of microgravity uh, experiments. So that's our long-term vision. Our short-term vision is to really build a new uh, low Earth orbit ecosystem, a new economy in orbit, uh, and that's sort of growing by leaps and bounds. So that includes taking private astronauts to space, also taking professional astronauts to space. And AX-1 was really the first installment, a new beginning, if you will, for taking private astronauts to space. Uh, but later on, we are going to create this new economy where we can do all sort of different, enable many kinds of businesses to flourish. To give you an example, ability to maybe print satellite or upload a 3D print of a satellite in orbit and printing it in orbit and launching it from space. Or printing corneas or retinas or other human organs in space. Uh, these are all the areas where uh, microgravity uh, is the best. Uh, and so we believe that we can create uh, new companies like in clinical research, STEM research, uh, data center in space, cloud in space. These are all the new things that we're thinking about uh, developing. And uh, we are really truly at the first mover in creating that economy, that ecosystem. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you are answered on uh, my second question already. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, uh, yes, if I add in uh, one small question, uh, what is the most promising area so far, the space business? Yeah, so um, uh, to be honest, we're so incredibly excited other than this professional astronaut and also uh, you know, private astronauts. It's things that we can do that uh, really help humanity today. I'll just give you an example of what I'm talking about. So we know right now that when astronauts go to space, uh, their aging actually accelerates very slightly. Okay, we know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So knowing that, um, then we want to do some clinical research to figure out whether we can slow aging down or even maybe reverse aging. We also know that there is a relationship between aging and our T cells in our body. We also know that there is a relationship between cancer and T cells. So can you imagine that through the microgravity, we might be able to actually come up with a, for a cure for cancer once and for all. And in addition to that, maybe we can even reverse or stop aging. Just as, as just as, this is just an example of many, many things 
that can be done in a microgravity environment. The best way I can describe it is, think about early days of internet. When, when in the beginning where internet was being developed, people could not imagine all the possibilities that can uh, come from internet. But today, you know, we cannot live without it. You know, every one of us ha have, a, have a digital device where we control our lives from. I believe we are at that stage with, you know, space exploration and space economy and space ecosystem where there is so many possibilities and so many that we haven't even imagined yet. <laughs> okay, thanks. And now uh, introduce astronaut Michael Ropez Alegria, the chief astronaut of Axiom Space. The Michael Ropez Alegria is an astronaut and test pilot a veteran of three space shuttle missions and one international space station mission. And uh, one month ago, though it was uh, big news, he uh, commanded Action One, the first ever all private teams of astronaut mission to the International Space Station. Uh, NASA's most experienced astronaut has now become the chief astronaut of private company. What made you challenge the new private space flight business? Well, thank you for the question. It's a bit of a long story, but I don't mind telling you. My last mission before I left NASA was in 2006. I went to the International Space Station aboard a Russian Soyuz capsule mm -hmm. with a Russian cosmonaut colleague, uh, Mikhail Turin. And the third person aboard that flight was a space flight participant, a non-professional. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I wasn't very excited about the opportunity to fly with a non-professional. I was mm -hmm. thinking that the International Space Station was only a place for seasoned professionals. Mm -hmm. But my time spent with Anusha Ansari mm -hmm. really changed my mind. And most significantly... Mm -hmm. When we were in orbit together, mm -hmm. she was doing something uh, brand new back then called blogging. So she mm -hmm. was writing her experience and people on earth were able mm -hmm. to share the experience that she was having and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people were following what she was doing while in space. Mm -hmm. And this is a new concept. It was the idea of democratizing the experience so that mm -hmm people beside astronauts in space could actually feel what it was like. And I began to really understand the power in being mm -hmm. able to share that experience mm -hmm. first through something like blogging and then eventually through actually participation in a space mission. So I became very much interested in this idea of democratizing access to space. And when I left NASA, I began to work with a trade association, first of all, that was advocating for that kind of activity, and eventually with Axiom, which, as you know, is the really the first company to be able to put that idea into practice to take mm -hmm. three private astronauts to the International Space Station. So it's been a bit of a long journey, but I couldn't be more proud and more pleased to be participating as commanding that mission as I had this passion that started almost 15 years ago. The Axiom Space uh, recently signed a contract to launch UAE astronaut to the ISS. The developing countries participating in space development, such as UAE and South Korea, have very few opportunities for their own astronaut to fly into space compared to the uh, advanced space faring countries. In this regard, what opportunities and services can Axiom Space provide? Yeah. Yes, thank you. That's a great question. Uh, you know, one of the astronauts that went to AX-1 was a, a private Israeli astronaut that went on AX-1. And uh, if, I am, uh, if I understand correctly, 85% of Israeli population was tuning in uh, to that mission. And it was an incredible pride for Israel. And I think one of the things that did is really inspire and motivate the young generation 
to think, um, you know, uh, to come up with new engineering, new math, be inspired that they can be space explorer, uh, come up with new physics, uh, actually, to do different things. Uh, it just tell you know, when I was 11 years old personally, uh, I saw Neil Armstrong landing on the surface of the moon, and that really inspired me that uh, I wanted to be part of the space program. It happens that the same story is true with Mike L.A. It also inspired him to be part of the space program. And as a result of that, you know, now I have created multiple commercial space companies. And of course, Michael is, uh, you know, a, a, a very uh, esteemed astronaut. And we're so proud to have him as part of our organization. So now imagine the UAE astronaut, or if you're able to take a private Korean astronaut to space, I think it will be a pride for Korea for South Korea, and not only that, I think it will inspire and create an amazing prestige for the country. And the young people in elementary school, middle school, high school, and others will be thinking about space and not only going to International Space Station, maybe to Moon and Mars and beyond. And uh, that's, that's something that I think is incredibly important. I also would add this, that when people go to space, like Michael and other private astronauts, when you're in space and you orbiting Earth, you don't see borders, you don't see boundaries. You see this beautiful blue globe that we all live, which is we all live there, which is our home. So space also is like a unifying uh, experience that brings all the humanity together. Uh, and I think in that, that way, for the countries who have not had an opportunity to participate in uh, you know, uh, space exploration, uh, Axiom Space is uh, able to bring all of those countries in. Uh, and I can tell you, in addition to UAE, uh, we have signed Hungary, we've signed Italy, and uh, there's a few other countries actually we've signed recently you will hear the next two weeks uh, with another Middle Eastern country where we're going to be taking their uh, astronaut to space. So this is actually a very growing e experience. And I am so incredibly proud that we're able to inspire uh, and motivate the young generation to think beyond just our planet. OK, the Korea may be the next. <laughs> we, we, will be we will be delighted. To work with Korea, I am so happy to be here in Seoul, and we'd be happy to uh, work with you to figure out if we can take a, uh, a Korean astronaut to space. We would love that. Okay, yeah. And uh, also a similar question. Uh, please tell us what kind of cooperation you expect with Korea in the future. Well, um, we're actually, uh, I'm hoping that uh, we will do all kinds of uh, collaboration um, you know, uh, with Korea not only taking private astronauts, but one of our investors actually in, in uh, Axiom Space is a company called Boryong. It's a pharmaceutical company that is working with us to do pharmaceutical research in space. So there will be, I, I expect we can do all sorts of collaborations in different technologies from data center to technology development, to maybe clinical research, to uh, STEM research, to data centers, to even taking private or prof professional astronauts uh, from uh, Korea to space. Okay, thanks. The, uh, the one, uh, the pharmaceutical company and uh, even one uh, beer brewing companies have interest things in space. <laughs> Experiment yeah. and space traveling in Korea. Yeah, yeah probably, probably you could contact them. <laughs> of course, be happy to. Okay, okay. Uh, the question to the uh, uh, astronaut uh, uh, Michael Lopez Alegria. Uh, I was in charge of the first Korean astronaut project in Korea ten years ago, so I know very well. Many young people around the world, especially many young Koreans, have the dreams of astronauts. So what kind of education and career paths would you advise them to have? 
Well, thank you for the question. Let me say, uh, I want to add a bit to uh, Chairman Gaffarian's comments and say that uh, the mission of Sion Lee was obviously very successful and, and quite popular in Korea. But what we would like to do with Korea is make it be more sustainable. So it's not one mm-hmm. flight every 10 or okay. 15 years, but yeah, something right. more frequent. Yeah. <laughs> and what Axiom can provide is a platform for doing very meaningful research, which can be supported by the institutions in Korea that are interested, mm-hmm. whether it's pharmaceutical or medical <laughs> or technological. These are all possibilities that we would like to explore with uh, Korea, either with private or professional astronauts. As you mentioned, it's been impossible for anybody that's not in the 15 nation partnership for ISS to perform experiments as professionals. And we now offer that possibility. As far as what to study, it's an interesting question. If you had asked me that question 15 years ago, I would have answered it with thinking that you needed to have a very technical degree in order to Mm -hmm. study something like science, technology, engineering, or mathematics to become, uh, at least in our case, a NASA astronaut. And I think the other agencies are similarly focused on technical education. However, with private astronauts, you can study whatever you want. And I would say the most important thing is to follow your passion, is to study what makes you happy because doing so will make you the most successful you can possibly be. And if for whatever reason you're not selected to be an astronaut, at least you'll enjoy your career the most. So whether it's journalism or cooking or art Mm. or engineering or architecture, it doesn't matter. Study whatever Mm -hmm. makes you happiest. The cost of flying to the International Space Station, according to the Swiss, uh, 10 years ago, it was around... Uh, 20 million dollars, but it is now known that uh, it is more than double the cost, uh, 40 to 50 million dollars now. How cheap do you expect space travel to be in the future? Absolutely, Uh, another great question. And you know, like Michael indicated earlier, our goal is to be able to democratize uh, space. So many people can go to space. Uh, and, and, you know, in the beginning, like any other industry, similar to like airlines, right? Uh, in the beginning, it, 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 it cost more. But as this technology is growing and access to space become less expensive, and we're able to take more people at less cost, I think more and more you will see, let's say, the next 10 to 15 years, that the cost will dramatically come down uh, and more people will be able to go. I I really hope that in about 20 years, it becomes similar like airlines, where we can, you know, just buy a ticket and go to space. And probably it's the last question to uh, the executive chairman, uh, Gaparians. Uh, the space business is very newly emerging. So now it is called uh, new space, but uh, it should followed by job creation, employment creations. Yeah, it's most important things as expanding the size of the uh, space industries, space markets. Do you have any ideas? Sure, sure, absolutely. I mean, uh, just in, um, you know, uh, I have three commercial space companies, uh, actually two commercial space companies in Houston and another one in Maryland. And in terms of job creations we've done, not only job creation, but high tech uh, job creation, uh, it's been exponential uh, in terms of uh, job, jobs that we created, but also it's an area that young people are excited about getting into. I mean, we've attracted in our companies some incredible young people. Uh, Again, because space is such a unifying place and exciting, uh, people are gravitated toward work for these commercial space companies, and it's a new area, right? It's it's a new area, and it's incredibly exciting. and, And I believe as Korea gets more and more 
into uh, that kind of business, uh, there will be many jobs that be created uh, and, and in many of the industries that um, uh, will be in space. Again, I go back to early days of internet, you know, uh, and people would ask where, how many jobs would be, you know, in internet. But look how many industries have now grown and flourished as a result of internet industry. It's incredible. I think the same thing is going to happen. I think the job creation, the size of the economy, the size of the new ecosystem uh, in uh, space economy and space market is going to be exploding, exploding all over the world. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, you are a good comment. Um, uh, it's the last question to uh, astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria. I have already mentioned that uh, I know that uh, become astronaut is uh, inspiring the young people, young generation and student very much. So do you have uh, some comment and uh, suggestions for the continuation and then boost up the young generations the inspiration for the space and also become astronaut. Yeah. Well, thank you for the question. I was one of those young people, uh, as was Cam. We were both inspired to become involved with space. And I think that uh, is always going to be a very attracting aspect of human spaceflight. But what I think is even more exciting than what was happening in our day when we were younger is that now, there are many paths to get to space. It's not just as a professional astronaut. Now you can become a private astronaut. You can become involved in one of these entrepreneurial countries, uh, sorry, companies that are pursuing new space, as you called it. Uh, you can be involved with government agencies. There are lots of different ways to be involved with the space, the new space age. And I think it's a wonderful time to be paying attention to what's happening in low Earth orbit and beyond. Okay, thanks. I think it seems like the, so far the only the military aircraft pilot, and now the we need a lot of the commercial airline uh, pilot. I think the astronaut is also uh, uh, the following the similar uh, path. Yeah. And thank you for your good suggestions and good ideas. Yeah. I think yes, it's uh, closing our uh, talks and. I feel definitely the space is come close uh, more than ever before. Yeah. So uh, new uh, business and new industries uh, uh, emerging from the uh, space uh, businesses now. So I hope the young people and young generations have uh, more opportunities to get a job and get inspirations. Yeah. And also uh, studying space space science, space engineering. Okay, uh, thank you for your joining us and I hope uh, we will meet again. I think the, in the September, the Megyong uh, Daily Newspaper the, will host the big uh, the World Knowledge Forum. So uh, I hope to see you again at the time. Thank you very much for your uh, joining us and attending these meetings. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.